Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday to you. Sun shining. It's a beautiful day. Go out and do something that you enjoy today. And this morning, I want to talk about the subject of judgment. You know, probably the most uh, quoted Bible passage in the universe is Matthew chapter 7 and verse 1 that says, Judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. Uh, nothing is more true than that in a spiritual sense and, and in a physical sense. And, and this morning, what I want to talk to you about is one of the most serious problems, the scourge of our society. And it's not judging others. It's judging ourselves too harshly. You know, not that judging others is, is good because it's not good either. But our perception is our reality. And not, not only of ourselves, but of the whole world. We're down on ourselves most of the time. We tell ourselves, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm too fat. I'm too slow. I'm too tall. I'm too short. Uh, no one likes me. No one's going to listen to me. Where does this come from? Well, in, initially, those things sometimes come from, from our family and our friends who don't want us to do something different than what they're doing or what they've always done. Now, there's a story I heard several years ago, and I, I love this story. There were two guys that were going on a business trip from Nashville to Chicago, and they, they got on a bus. Well, they, they sat together, and, and they were motoring along down the, down the interstate on this bus. And all of a sudden, in front of them, they heard this fellow laugh. He would just, he busted out, and he started laughing. Just, <laughs> and and it, they couldn't help but, uh, but notice that this fellow was just laughing his head off. And then they, they were going along, and, and he would bust out laughing again. <laughs> they just, they couldn't believe that there's this guy up there, and he's sitting by himself. And he just busts out laughing. Well, they, they go along, and eventually this fella just laughs and laughs and laughs. I mean, he hee-haws. It's just so funny. And they, he's not listening to anything. He's, he's not reading anything. He didn't have anything with him. He just sitting there and he just laughed and laughed and laughed. Well, they, they talked between themselves. They said, wonder what is this guy doing? Well, they, they get, get off the bus. They get to Chicago where they're going. They get off the bus and the two of them just, they have to ask this guy what was going on. And, and they go up to him and they say, sir, we noticed as we were riding along on the bus that every once in a while you would just laugh. And, and he'd say, yeah, it was a boring trip. It was a long trip. I didn't have anything with me. So I decided that I would tell myself jokes. And they said, well, wait a minute. There was this one time where you just laughed and laughed and laughed. We, we thought you were going to pass out. You laughed so hard. And he said, yeah, I'd never heard that one before. You know, that's funny, but the truth is, is here's a fellow that, that knew how, how to laugh, that how to entertain himself, and he didn't care what anybody else thought. Now, what about us? How do we overcome this self-deprecation? How do we overcome beating up ourselves about the things that we want to do? We do something. Do something. Face your fears. Face those voices inside of your head. You cannot let the voices stop you. What if, what if I didn't talk this morning or any other time when, when I really should talk and, and tell people some things that they need to hear, things that I need to hear? What if I listened to that voice that said, oh, you're not good enough. You know, there are thousands of other people out there 
that folks will listen to and they're not going to listen to you. We wouldn't be having this conversation right now. Don't listen to those voices. And Joe Walsh is, uh, you know, today he's, he's one of my heroes because he's overcome so much and he's such a great guitar player. And, and you wonder listening to him talk sometimes how, how some of the beautiful harmonies come about with the, the Eagles and he's part of it, but he, he was interviewed several years ago and they asked him about, you know, what advice he would have for, for young musicians. And, and he said that they should go and practice and then get out there in front of people and play. He's, and he didn't say it exactly like this because I'm not going to use, use what he said, but he said, you know, everybody stinks when they get started at anything. Everything that you've ever started, you're going to be bad at to start with. But he said, what you do is you go, you go out there and you play and, and you stink and, and you're bad. And you go back and you identify what you did wrong and you go back and you do it again and you play and you stink a little less. And then you go back and you practice, you identify what you need to change and you go back again in front of people and you play again and you stink a little less. He says, eventually, you know, the, the things that people would sometimes identify as a mistakes, you just make it part of the, the performance and nobody even knows that you had made a mistake. Yeah, the truth is getting started at anything, everybody stinks when they get when they first begin. Everybody. I want you to know that that voice inside of your head is not your conscience. It's not the conscience of what is trying to guide you into good and right principles. That voice is the voice of fear. And the voice of fear will hold you back from every single good thing that you should do. You know, I've heard two acronyms for, for fear. And one, one is if it really is a problem, you know, and, and you're scared, like there, there is a, a lion or a tiger. I, I guess I probably shouldn't use tiger these days in, uh, <laughs> as an example, but, but there's some uh, mean animal in the street that's threatening you. Well, the one acronym is forget everything and run. <laughs> and, and we've all had those experiences, but, but we use ev that for everything. And what we really need to remember is fear in these circumstances stands for false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. It's, it's that old dumb story that we've told ourselves about the thing that, that we know in our heart that we want to do, the thing that we need to do, and the thing that we need to get out there that will help people, that will impact their lives, but yet we let fear stop us. False evidence appearing real. The judgment that we use on ourselves will stop us from every good thing that we ought to do. There are things that we shouldn't do. There are bad things and our real conscience will identify those based on truth. But there are things that are not real there are things that are not true, and we let those things stop us. We, we let those put a halt to the life that we really want to live. Don't let your own judgment, bad judgment, stop you anymore. Now, real quick, I know there are several people who have who have asked for this. And this, this is my Design Your Life workbook. Titled it Design Your Life, 
making your life more of what you want in order to find happiness and fulfillment. I still have plenty of those since it's on a PDF and I can send it to anybody. If you want one, all you have to do is say you want it. Anyway, I hope you all have a great day that you'll not be so harsh in judging yourself. Do not be harsh in judging others. Love one another. Love yourself. And stop those voices in your head. Face your fear. Step up to the plate. You might not hit a home run to start with, but you keep swinging and you're going to do it. I love y'all. Have a great Saturday. Take care and I'll see you Tuesday.